Thomas Gumol thinks of himself as a lucky guy. A 35-year-old stonecutter and resident of Phoenix, Arizona, just found new full-time work after several months of unemployment. Man, it was right around the beginning of the pandemic. The hours went from 40 to 20. Within uh, two weeks, it went from 20 down to, you know, almost zero. At that point, I, I did have to quit, file the unemployment, wait for that stuff to come through. First time I ever applied for it. Unemployment payments from Washington and from the state government kept him somewhat afloat, but then he fell behind on his rent. And that had consequences. Despite an Arizona governor's executive order to postpone evictions, Thomas was evicted. His new home now, the Del Rio Lodge Motel, where he now pays around $300 per week. Now I have an eviction, so now it's going to be very hard to get a new apartment. For Ken Folk, president of an organization called Arizona Tenants Advocates, Thomas' case is just one of many he is dealing with every day. The COVID-19 pandemic puts people out of work. Then many can't pay rent anymore. They get thrown out of their homes and onto the streets, and that in return fuels the pandemic again. It's a no-win situation. It's, it's a lose-lose situation. There's, there's no um, proper... Uh, solution here until we get a handle on this virus and you know especially if you've got people out on the street you know conveying the virus from person to person to social group to social group there's no one that's going to be safe safe is something julia brewer hasn't felt in months she says her husband chef was furloughed early on in the pandemic and then got sick with covid she and her son were also hit by the virus the summer was the worst. It's, it's all of us catching COVID and no work. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Julia has a rare neurologic condition called stiff person syndrome. She can't work and receive social security and disability payments. It pays the rent, but that's it. I have $53 left out of my social security disability after paying rent. And it's you know, crying, trying to figure out which bill is going to be paid. Are we going to have enough food left over? Or am I going to have to go to the food bank this month? Julia is afraid things could even get worse for her and her family. She has a message for Washington. The three branches of the government need to come together and make a legitimate plan for the people. This is serious and they need to be able to come together on a good plan and right now. Right now can't come soon enough here. In the shadows of Arizona's Capitol building in downtown Phoenix, this tent city for the homeless is growing every day. Kayelicha, the largest township in Cape Town. More than one million people live here, including Zuleka Velenrani. A month ago, she could no longer afford the rent and simply built her own hut on a vacant lot next door. Hundreds of others did the same and christened the new neighborhood COVID-19. Because uh, everything just happens uh, because of this COVID. There were lost jobs, there were nothing for us, money, anything. Man. That's why we have to take that COVID-19 name. Zuleka shows us the makeshift hut where she lives with her boyfriend and three children. This, this is my house. I've been staying here. This place is too small. I've got one bed, so where are the children are going to sleep? You see, my house is also have um, leaking uh, spots. I don't have anything to solve at the moment. I don't have money, but I'm still here. The family pays no rent here, but the land doesn't belong to them. The people are setting up their shacks all over the place. There are a lot of construction happening and many here are saying they don't have a choice because they can't afford to pay rent any longer. But the city on the other hand says these illegal land invasions are causing huge problems. City officials tell us there have been more than 30 new locations with massive land occupations in just the last six weeks. Law and order are in danger. Cape Town lost 300 hectares of land in the last year. Whatever the land was meant for is lost, whether it is a hospital, a school, a clinic. If a piece of land is standing open, it's because there is an intended community use for that land. There is, in the case of these big Kailicha land invasions, where I will tell you that community leadership in Kailicha stood up. 
This is not a fight against land invaders against the state or land invaders against the city of Cape Town. This is a fight of land invaders against the city of Cape Town and local residents. Since June, the city says it has torn down some 60,000 huts, in some cases resulting in violence. This man was pulled out of his hut naked. A court has now ruled that the city needs a court order for evictions and must offer alternative accommodation to squatters. But the city can't afford that. 400,000 people are already on waiting lists for social housing. That housing waiting list doesn't get shorter. And the reason it doesn't get shorter is because there's constantly people pushing in the front. If you were standing in a queue in a bank or at a cinema or theater or something, and you never got to the front because people were constantly pushing in the front, you would become very angry and enraged. Zulika Vilengani and her family have also been hoping for an apartment from the state for a long time, so far in vain. The government should provide us uh, our needs because we need uh, something like toilets, or water, electricity. We have, to get, we have to get them from the government. It's our right most if we have to live in this place. We have to. Because when we need to go to the loo or you want to do the number two, you have to take the packet and then you dig there. So the place is going to be full of all those things. You can't go to the bush there and see it because there are people who are building their house also. Zuleka is convinced that she will continue to live here in the future. A court order for eviction takes up to one and a half years. The police are not intervening for the time being and around her the settlement continues to grow.